Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So right now we are uh, trying to finish uh, part of speech tagging with uh, hidden markov model and I'll give you a brief information on support vector machine and other graph graphical model. You will also do the assignment. And you will also do the uh, part of speech tagging with uh, by LSTM, which should start you on deep learning. OK, uh, so. Uh, so yes, in the last class, we uh, again mentioned the plain part of speech tag set which has become quite standard, but the problem that happens is that many times these part of speech tags are also uh, annotated or, or used in annotation in combination. So that increases the size of the tag set many folds. So assuming there are 40 tags, if you allow a combination, then in the worst case, we are talking of some 1600 combinations. So not all of which are applicable, but it can blow up the size of the tag set. So we'll work with a reduced tag set. Uh, the TA team and I discussed, and you, you will have a simplified tag set for the assignment. So I'll talk about it a little later. So hidden Markov model was the technique used for part of speech tagging. And just to remind you, hidden Markov model consists of set of states, observations, transition matrix, observation probability matrix, and the initial probabilities. So we took the ARN example, which is a, uh, a classic example used by everybody who teaches HMM. And the observation sequence was shown RRGG, BRGR. And uh, using this transition and observation probabilities, we uh, got a probabilistic finite state automaton. We were uh, uh, in a position to combine the observation probability and transition probability. Now this is the uh, automaton that is in front of you. So observation and states and then the goal was to maximize the state sequence given the observation sequence. Um, and we said that we should not take a false start of directly computing from the expression PS given O. Uh, we should apply Bayes theorem and get the prior probability and likelihood probability. And from all that, if you have seen the slides, we are able to come to a situation where uh, the probability of a path can be found out by multiplying the joint probability of going from a state to the next state and observing a symbol at that state. So a very uh, elegant notation is P of SK going to SK plus one on observation OK. OK, so SK going to SK plus on one on observation OK is is a well known notation OK and intuitive also. The probability of that is actually a joint probability, which I had mentioned to you before. So with this understanding, uh, now the slide shows brown foxes jumped over the fence. So brown foxes jumped over the fence would give rise to many paths because from every state you can have multiple next states and next states are multiple next pause tags. So uh, there is a possibility of exponential number of uh, leaves at the last observation, which is dot. OK, but uh, because of the Markov assumption, we apply Viterbi decoding in an efficient manner and uh, that was illustrated by a very simple method, uh, a very simple example, two states only S1 and S2 and two symbols A and A1 and A2. Uh, we uh, drew the tree, search tree for uh, decoding starting from the start state. Now you're see seeing developing the tree slides, developing the tree. And uh, there, I'll just uh, go through the steps once again, uh, looking at observations one by one. We start at the start state, possible states, next states are S1 and S2 on epsilon. 
and then uh, S2 has probability zero. We do not advance that uh, state at all uh, because the probability gets multiplied. Now S1 goes to uh, S1 and S2 again, and uh, there I have the partial probability of the path computed. From S1 again, I go to S1 and S2. From S2 I get, again, go to S1 and S2. So at this point of time, uh, the Viterbi algorithm, the main trick of the Viterbi algorithm be, kicks in. Okay, uh, The algorithm's uh, key step is to choose the highest probability path ending in a particular state. So that can happen only when you have children with uh, multiple paths ending in the same state. The Viterbi assumption will not kick in uh, at the first level and the second level because you do not have paths ending in the same state there. But after that, when you have paths ending in the same state, you take that particular path out of all the paths ending in the same state whose probability is maximum. And we understood very clearly that this is the right thing to do because other paths will never produce a winner path. Okay, because the observations will be presented and each state will see the same set, same uh, suffix of observations from that state. So this is the way the Viterbi algorithm will proceed and at the end we'll find out the best possible path. One question that was asked was, what happens if uh, multiple paths have the same probability? Then choosing any of them arbitrarily will not make a difference as far as highest probability path is concerned. But that answer is only a uh, part of the reality because uh, when you have multiple paths with the same ending state and same probability, accumulated probability, uh, maybe uh, some paths are not linguistically feasible. Okay, some paths are not linguistically feasible. So to give an example, uh, suppose the path is DT NN NN, determiner noun noun, and DT NN VB, determiner noun and verb. The boy laughs, okay, and the blue sky. Now, the blue sky is determiner adjective noun. The golf stick, determiner noun noun, okay. The boy laughs and the golf stick. So now we know that noun noun combination is uh, is a very frequent occurrence, but noun verb combination is possibly more frequent. So that you know from the corpus, and some combinations like noun adjective, okay, noun adjective adjective following a noun is linguistically not very feasible. So what I'm trying to say is that even though uh, there is maybe a situation where multiple paths have same accumulated probability ending in the same state, you need extra knowledge outside probability, outside Viterbi, sanctioned by language properties, which decide which path is linguistically more acceptable. OK, so there are other considerations. But uh, at this point of time, since we are at the level of part of speech tagging, we have not gone into syntax or semantics or pragmatics. We can live with that situation. OK, so whatever is computationally sanctioned need not be linguistically sanctioned and vice versa. OK, something may be linguistically sanctioned, but computationally not feasible because of complexity. OK, so there are subtleties involved and remember NLP is a task where we combine linguistics and computation. OK, therefore both considerations have to be kept in mind. Okay. We did up to that and uh, then when it comes to converting it into an algorithm, this intuitive idea into an algorithm, uh, data structures help us. OK, the intuitive idea uh, is supported by uh, you know, Markov assumption, probability, uh, chain rule of probability and so on. 
Now a data structure which is useful is a tabular representation of the tree. So our observation was A1, A2, A1, A2. So we start with epsilon where we go to a particular state as the starting state. And from A1, A2, A1, A2, we have these cells which you notice are uh, two tuples. OK, these are tuples. So the first component of the tuple gives the accumulated probability with respect to a path ending in S1. And the second component of the tuple gives you the probability of the path ending in S2. So uh, there are two rows, S1 and S2, and the columns are the observations. So this is a nice elegant representation of the tree, and each cell records all the paths um, ending in uh, S1 and S2 with uh, the observations. OK, so I'm not going into details of this tabular representation and the algorithm. Here is the reference. Viterbi algorithms implementation is described at many places. You will get ready-made code also. OK, my request is not to copy those code, but understand the algorithm and code it yourself. Code the Viterbi algorithm yourself. It is a nice recursive algorithm using dynamic programming. Maybe some 15, 20 lines of code, but it, it makes your understanding clear. So this algorithm is pretty elegantly described in the first reference book we have mentioned in the reference list in James Allen, Natural Language Understanding, second edition. So this is a very celebrated book on natural language processing, but uh, non-machine learning. Okay, This describes the NLP from language and linguistics perspective, but a very insightful book. Now, uh, you iterate over the observations and uh, slowly uh, you come to a situation where all the observations are over. Now you follow the back pointer and get the uh, highest probability path. OK, so uh, converting the ideas into an algorithm is uh, not a very tough task. OK, so now from there we we'll go to the part of speech tag problem back to part of speech tag tagging problem. We illustrated Viterbi decoding with only two states and two symbols. But in part of speech tagging, we deal with multiple words and many, many part of speech tags, about 30, 40 tags, and uh, you know, huge number of words, 30,000, 40,000 words, corporize, very common. So uh, therefore, we have to be concerned with efficiency. OK, the set of tags is T. The set of words is W. So, uh, so we do not need exponential work as has been described in the uh, Viterbi algorithm. Uh, suppose our tags are a very simplified set of tags: DT, NN, VB, JJ, RB, and OT. DT means determinant, NN is noun, VB is verb, JJ is adjective, RB is adverb. Okay. So, and the sentence we have is the black dog barks. The sentence beginner is hat, sentence finisher is dot, the black dog barks. So uh, you, you have uh, different, uh, below each word different tags. All the tags are recorded here. This is for the purpose of making the algorithm simpler. Assume that all tags are applicable to all the words. So below DT, below the, I have written DT, NN, VB, JJ, RB, OT. Only a DT tag is applicable here. Below black, we have written DT, NN, VB, JJ, RB, OT. So NN, VB, and JJ are applicable. Black is not a DT at all. But still, we record all the tags below each word uh, so that the algorithm is uniform. Okay, Many of the tags will not be applicable by virtue of the probability. Okay, There will be zero probability for uh, black being DT. The observation probability or the lexical probability of black coming out from DT is zero. OK, so therefore that path will automatically get eliminated. The algorithm becomes simpler because you have to deal with uniform number of tags. Now um, I show a few levels of the development of the tree. I start with the hat symbol. And from the hat symbol, I can go to DT, NN, VB, JJ, RB and OT on seeing the word DT, the, 
okay and this this gives me 6 to the power 1 6 leaves 6 leaves at this stage the observation is the then from dt i have another 6 children and the observation made is black the sentence is the black dog barks okay uh, so from dt i have 6 children from n and i will have 6 children from bb 6 children and so on so for every uh, uh, node dt n and vb etc i will have a path ending in dt okay from each of these six nodes dt n and vb jj rb ot i'll have a path ending in dt i'll have a path ending in nn so there will be six paths ending in dt six paths ending in nn six paths ending in vb and so on and now i'll calculate amongst all the paths ending in dt which path has the highest probability all other paths i will stop there itself okay similarly for nn similarly for vb and so on so after looking at uh, black i will have six square that is 36 leaves at this level but out of that only six will advance to the next state which is the state after observing dog and after that i'll see barks and finally, uh, I'll, uh, I'll get the highest probability path. But if we did not um, apply Viterbi assumption, uh, Viterbi algorithm, decoding algorithm, and Markov assumption, we would have six to the power four paths to deal with. But because of the way the nodes are getting as, uh, advanced, we'll have six into four. Okay, huge reduction in the complexity. So this is how Viterbi decoding is applied on part of speech tagging. So I uh, uh, show, show the calculations on seeing hat, the and black. So there are six uh, partial paths. For each of them, the probabilities are recorded. Probability of DT given hat, probability of NN given DT, probability of the given DT, and probability of black given NN. So all these uh, probabilities are obtained already from the corpus. They are available parameters. And for each of these path, I have the probability values, cumulative probability values recorded. So that is uh, fine. And after that, the computation can proceed uh, making the Markov assumption. So same thing will happen for another sentence like uh, brown foxes jumped over the fence. And you can deal with any sentence, any set of tags, as long as this particular theory and the algorithm is clear. So this is how it will proceed. Now um, the decoding summary is as follows. On every word, compute the partial path probability. Out of all partial paths ending in a particular state, choose the one with highest path probability. Advance only that leaf. In case of tie, choose any one arbitrarily. So this is the decoding summary. At every word, we compute the partial path probability. Okay, and uh, this is nothing but dynamic programming, and uh, uh, you know you can co code it very well and have an insight. Now uh, we'll come to the assignment discussion, uh, but before that, uh, let me uh, just talk about the annotation matter. So. Uh, we have uh, the tag repository and the probabilities of the uh, parameters okay, associated with these tags. So the question is where do tags come from? They come from the tag set. How do we get the probability value of our uh, transition probability and uh, the observation probability? How do we get those values? We get them from annotated corpus. So after we have finished the machine learning task or the modeling task, now we should be concerned about the corpus. So when we compute the probability values, what we do is that we take ratio. So let us suppose the annotated corpus has the following sentence. I have a brown bag. So I is PRN, have is VB, A is DT, brown is JJ, bag is NN. Now probability of noun given adjective JJ is number of times JJ is followed by 
uh, NN. So number of times you have JJ NN combination and divide it by number of times JJ appears. This is the transition probability and probability of Brown given JJ is the number of times Brown is tagged as JJ divided by number of times JJ appeared. OK, so all these numbers are obtainable from an annotated corpus. If we have large amount of corpus, then we can uh, take these parameter values as trustworthy. OK, by what is called the law of large numbers, the central limit theorem, etc., which we'll talk about as we go along. So these statistics can be believed if we have large corpus. OK, and the large corpus means uh, corpus which is annotated by tags. Now, uh, why can we take ratios? OK, so we uh, take ratios quite, uh, uh, you know, deliberately without thinking deep into why ratios work. So this way of computing parameter of probabilities, uh, is this correct? So what does correct mean? That means is this uh, computation principle? So the principle that we are using is called maximum likelihood estimate, OK, which is one of the foundations of machine learning and uh, maximum likelihood estimate says that you choose your parameter such that the observation probability is maximum. And in our case, what is the observation? Observation is the annotated corpus. OK, so uh, we look upon the annotated corpus as our observation and we say that this observation probability should be maximum. And why is it a uh, probability situation? The probability situation comes because of the ambiguity. At every position you have a word, but you can have multiple tags in that position. So there is an uncertainty with respect to the tag. So you should tag such that the, uh, the probability of the sentence which is in front of you with respect to tagging has the maximum value. Okay. Before that we need training and training in this case means getting the transition and observation probabilities. I think there is a, a confusion here in some of the students mind that does the training mean training the hidden Markov model in which case we have to apply the Baum Welsh algorithm. No, that is not the case. OK, uh, that is not the case. In this case, the situation uh, is uh, supervised learning situation. The tags are given along with the observation. So the, st the state annotation is available on the observation. If we had only observation and no states, OK, then we will have to apply the baum wells alg algorithm to obtain the transition and observation probabilities. OK, so when we do expectation maximization, uh, the baum wells algorithm will be an important case study. But in this case, you see the states are already annotated on the observation. Therefore, you don't have to do baum wells algorithm. You can apply maximum likelihood estimate. That means take ratios of transitions and ratios of observation to states. That will work. Now, uh, we can uh, explain this ratio taking with the coin tossing example. If a coin is tossed 100 times, the head appears 40 times. Then the probability of head is 0 0.4. This you know since your school days. But I don't know if you asked yourself, why are we taking these ratios? We take these ratios because of the maximum likelihood. 